Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's excellent to have you here as always, and thank you for watching. Uh, today is gonna be a little bit off the wall because normally we cover firearms and politics related topics here. And today we're gonna be doing neither of these. Uh, what we're gonna do today is actually discuss a little bit about the East Palestine, Ohio uh, train wreck slash chemical spill slash chemical fire that's going on that's um, inundating the news lately. I wanna do this for a couple reasons. First of all, I'm an Ohio resident, so I'm somewhat impacted by this, but then also uh, I'm, actually a classically educated chemist. A lot of you may know that and that have been following the channel for a while. I graduated from Ohio University in 2009 uh, with a degree in biological sciences with a minor in chemistry. And I was a chemist five years out of school before I decided to hang that up for various reasons. So I have a pretty broad uh, experience set, particularly when it comes to industrial type chemicals, uh, which is primarily what we're talking about here. And I thought that it would be a good idea since the manifest has been re uh, released that we could just kind of go through this really quick and talk about the various things that we've uh, got going on that are impacted by this crash. Because I think there's a lot of hysteria going on here and I think there's some good stuff that we can glean from this. Now, first and foremost, uh, this is not to be taken as health advice. You should consult your doctor about this sort of stuff. Atmospheric effects. So if you live in East Palestine, Ohio, you might be concerned about this. Or if you live downwind, the rest of us uh, probably not so much concerned about the atmospheric effects because the prevailing wind is going to be east and north. The second would be a contamination of the waterways and things like that. This thing happened right on the Ohio River. So you got to be cognizant of the potential for a uh, chemical leakage. I don't have any hard evidence that did make it into the Ohio River, but we can only guess. Uh, as as far as weather here in the state of Ohio, I would say that the past few weeks we have had some heavy rain. Uh, that said, if you would like to help contribute, we have a, a Linktree account linked in the description box down below where you can take advantage of great brands that I stand behind and have worked with on a regular basis. The one that I've been consistently pushing your way is PowerTac flashlights. This is the current EDC light that I use on a regular basis. And here's a video of my brother opening a beer bottle with this flashlight. So first and foremost, the first thing on the list is polypropylene. This is a plastic. Uh, same thing with the next thing, which is polyethylene. You can think of these as your hard plastics. If you catch them on fire, they basically degrade all the way down to carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, water. The big one that everybody's talking about is uh, vinyl chloride. There's several cars of our vinyl chloride impacted by this, but it looks to me like none of them have actually uh, been perforated or spilled, which is a good thing. So vinyl chloride by itself is pretty bad. It is a colorless gas and it is water soluble and heavier than air. So it's gonna congregate in your low lying areas, but it's also soluble in water. So if it gets into any of the uh, water table or waterways, that's a problem. Um, we know it to be uh, cancer causing. It is a known cancer causing agent. It is uh, relatively toxic, it is uh, permissible exposure limit is like one part per million. So it's, it's not, it's not great for you by itself. The main concern when it comes to uh, vinyl chloride is that if it's heated, because it is a chlorine containing compound, there's a potential for really two semi-dangerous species that do two different things. The first one is uh, hydrogen chloride. Many of you who are in the know will know this as uh, HCl or <laughs> hydrochloric acid. You can tell that all the news outlets are reporting from the same source because they don't know that it's hydrochloric acid. HCl in the atmosphere is not great because it can go up into the cloud system and concentrate and then fall back to the earth in the form of acid rain. The other uh, potential problem is that carbon containing compounds that also contain chlorine when heated uh, can form Phosgene readily and phosgene is uh, pretty bad. Okay, there's just no other way to put it other than phosgene is um, Really really not good. It is classified as a chemical warfare agent. It was used in World War one next up is uh, Dipropylene glycol. This is a colorless liquid. It's super low in toxicity. Its toxicity isn't even listed next up is propylene glycol and this one uh, is not really concerned whatsoever. This is uh, in your food. No concern there. The next one is diethylene glycol. And this one's a little bit of a concern as far as water contamination is concerned. It's relatively toxic as far as a, uh, a poison is concerned. Uh, this has got an LD50 of two to five grams uh, per kilogram in rats. So you can do the math on that. A human needs to consume a decent amount of, them, amount of it to kill them, does readily mix with water. Ethylene glycol monobutyl ether. So this one is uh, a paint solvent prim primarily. 
And as such, it's going to have some kind of like, think of it like binder uh, capacities. Uh, you could also consider it a surfactant in many cases. Uh, this one is going to be a little bit weird because it is it is a very low vapor pressure solvent. So this is what we would classify as a potentially persistent environmental contaminant. So it could potentially contaminate groundwater. So that's why it's pretty important that that gets cleaned up. Um, the other thing about this is that it can go right through your skin. It is known to cause uh, skeletal defects, particularly in rat studies. Senolina is ground up wheat. For those of you who want to know, um, ethyl hexyl acrylate. Uh, this is um, used in polymer manufacturing, and um, if left out to sit uh, in sunlight, this has the potential to explode. Otherwise, it's not particularly hazardous, and this is one of the ones I'm actually interested in looking up really quick. So it looks to me like this it was a partial loss of a car. Polyvinyl. Now this one, I'm at a little bit of a loss. I'm assuming that based on designated as a hopper car, that this is PVC pipe. Petroleum lube oil. Um, yeah, I mean, oil spills, guys. Uh, polypropylene glycol. This is uh, another one that's not really a big concern. Think uh, polyurethane production. So any of your um, like deck coatings or anything like that, this is an integral uh, part in producing those. But the one that many of you will probably be familiar with is this is integral to the manufacture of paintballs. Uh, isobutylene. This is a flammable gas and it is used in the manufacture of like butyl nitrile gloves and things like that. It's also in your gasoline. Not really that big of a concern, so just throwing that out there. Butyl acrylate. This is one of the other uh, toxic ones that you should know about. Butyl acrylate has an LD50 of roughly two, kilo or two grams per kilogram. If you were a human, you'd have to drink like roughly a half gallon, but it's still probably not good for food chains out there. So we're, as far as like food webs and things like that are concerned, it's, it's uh, not very soluble. So this stuff is going to float kind of like on the water you can expect. And um, it will also uh, vaporize pretty readily. I would keep animals away from the puddles. Okay. More oil, more PVC. And then the last thing I want to talk about is benzene. And it looks like the, they say that the two cars of benzene that were on the train were damaged, fire impinged, but no breach on both of them, which means that I can basically skip through what I was going to say about this. And that is that benzene is an intercalating agent. It's a uh, it's a carcinogen. It basically is a very flat ring that will insert itself into DNA. It's known to do that. Uh, malt liquor, hydraulic cement, and paraffin wax. Okay, so not a whole lot of extra stuff to talk about uh, on this one. You know, from looking at this list and what was caught on fire and what wasn't, I don't see a lot besides the like train components that should have produced those big black plumes of smoke, except for that petroleum lube oil. So I'm going to guess that that's going to be our major culprit that makes it look pretty bad. Given the the uh, cloud cover that we've had here in Ohio over the course of the last couple of weeks, it probably made it look even worse than it was. Again, most of the stuff should burn off colorlessly. So I, I don't really see what else that could be. And I would say that based on what I've seen here in this manifest, I only can go off the information that I have. Maybe, just maybe... If you are uh, one of the people that is potentially downwind from this thing, you might park your car inside for a little little bit of time, maybe a couple rain cycles until that's kind of worked itself out. And if you uh, live along the high river, get your water from that watershed, um, you might consider a home filtration system uh, in the short term. I personally use a Royal Berkey. It's got two giant charcoal filters in it that should probably filter out the majority of those kind of, kind of contaminants. Just throwing that out there, uh, consider buying bottled water for a couple months uh, as far as your drinking water is concerned. Other than that, um, yeah, use your treated water sources in your local community. It's going to be pretty good at cleaning that out. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you learned something, then sound off in the comment section down below. And hopefully we'll see you in another video here at the VSO Gun Channel.